evening, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's post game press conference. Uh, to kick things off, uh, St. Louis City is the first team, first expansion team to go unbeaten through their first five games in back to back seasons, and the fifth team in league history to do so. Um, we're going to kick it off with an opening statement with Coach Carnell, followed by questions. So, Coach, you've got the floor. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, yeah, interesting stat. <laughs> Um, yeah, good evening. Um, first of all, just want to apologize to the fans. Um, you know, it, it frustrates me a little bit when fans pay hard earned cash to get some tickets and, and watch a soccer game. And, you know, there's no rhythm to the game and uh, there's no real action. We pride ourselves on action. Um, and unfortunately, um, yeah, there was a little bit of disruption of rhythm. Uh, tonight so you know for me I heard for the fans because they deserve more um, and then uh, yeah to my team you know I'm, I'm, I'm proud that we go a goal up uh, not so proud that we concede straight away now in two games um, when we give away these uh, you know moments from from the kickoff so something to reflect on something we'll have to get better at something we'll have to look at a little bit more intensely um, but again, my focus is not really on the soccer match. There was no real soccer rhythm, no real soccer match tonight. Um, and again, we show guts, we show desire to get back in the game. But, you know, those are the least of my thoughts tonight. And uh, yeah, my thoughts are with the fans. Thanks, Coach. Tom, kick us off. Um, yeah, on giving up that goal, I mean, you look frustrated on the bench after that happened. Is it, is it just a, the team... Now, not being in the moment, does yeah, it work? it's difficult with with Benteke. We've seen, you know, the long balls and and off of these rhythm of the plays and and stuff like that. So, you know, every every game poses a different problem. Um, you know, which means we have to look at ourselves because it's now against two different opponents um, and, and two different situations. So, um, yeah, it's really frustrating. Uh, you know, um, but yeah, they came, they battled away. You know, broke down the play. Um, yeah, they did what they needed to do. It seemed like you were we're okay with the ties on the road because those were road points, but coming home and, and getting a tie. Yeah, sure. Again, you know, I don't know. We, we play an aggressive game and, and uh, you know, there's usually a lot of stoppages corners when we play because we're forcing things out of bound. We're forcing interceptions. Um, but yeah, just, you know, just, just to see the ball in play time diminish. Um, it becomes real frustrating when there's no rhythm to the game. Please. Talking about the rhythm, um, are you talking about the refereeing stopping and stopping the match for a, a lot of, of caution cards and fouls? And also going to that, do the DC United share that same sentiment that you thought with the lack of soccer being played tonight? Uh, I don't know. You'll have to evaluate, you know, who was trying to speed up the play, who was not trying to speed up the play. I think that's a question for you and, and your observation. Okay, thank you. George? Coach, how important do you think that goal was for Klaus to finally get a goal this season and hopefully boost his confidence? Yeah, massive. I think he's been working his tail off to try and get into moments. And you could see he gets a good assist for, for Nukvi. If Nukvi, you know, uh, on another day, we'll put that one in the back of the net. We win the game and we're all happy uh, with the performance. So, you know, I thought, again, it's been, you know, a couple of weeks now in a row uh, where we make an impact off the bench. You know, we keep guys hungry. We give guys starts. Um, there's a certain rhythm to our game, um, you know, and, and we feel pretty good up until the point that uh, uh, we score our goal. Um, and then I think we, we dominated much of the proceedings tonight, you know. So it's massive for Klaus. Uh, good to get into good spots. He's got his fitness back. You can see he doesn't stop working for the 90 minutes. Um, and he's a real menace up top. So, you know, he's, he's working his way back. And the harder you work, you know, you'll get into better situations. And he did so tonight. And, you know, given the situations with DC missing a couple of players, do you, even though you got the draw, do you feel like it was kind of a missed opportunity tonight to take the three points? Yeah, I don't know. If we, you know, you can also mention a couple of names off of our roster as well. Coach, talk about the first goal, obviously, that your disappointment when the second goal comes in right after it. But Josh Yarrow to be able to get into that position is becoming a real important player for you this year. I mean, what did that moment mean for him and for you watching? Yeah, it's massive. Um, you know, I think there's to get a corner kick, there has to be some form of momentum, some final third entry, some final play. So, you know, we've been challenging the guys to have many more of these moments. And I think you could see some real good stuff in the first half where we just don't get off that final reward. So, you know, then we get the corner, a deflection or what have you. <clears throat> and then we get uh, some good quality service. So, you know, whether it's Edu Leuven, AZ Jackson, Celio Pompeu, Indy, Indy Vasilev, you know, I think we're pretty, 
uh, unpredictable uh, at set pieces. Um, but for us, it's predictable. Um, and that's the most important thing because it's about getting in the right spots early on. Uh, it's about making the right runs uh, and it's about rewarding yourself. So, you know, with the strength of them, you know, in their defensive uh, block, you look at, you know, the way they defend, it's not so easy to beat that. So, you know, credit to Alex uh, setting up the, the set piece play. Um, and now we reward ourselves again. Uh, no, about predictable, uh, Celio comes in off the bench and does one of those things that Celio does on that run that sets up the uh, um, sets up the penalty kick. I mean, it's kind of that we were looking for from Celio off the bench. I guess you always are looking for that. Yeah, Celio. I mean, we're looking for some change of rhythm, change of pace, some creativity. So Celio offers that from the beginning of the games, and and we know, you know, last week whether we start or bring on Sam or start and bring on Klaus or start and bring on Celio, you know, so these are always equations we're playing with. Um, we thought two strikers was the way to go tonight. And I think early on, you could see the, the intent of the game, this back and forth, the second ball, the chaotic game that there was. Um, so we thought that as the game progresses, we'd need more, you know, sort of um, patience on the ball. And, and I think Celio brought that in certain moments and uh, yeah, he was really creative. He was brave and uh, earns the penalty. And Dewar makes his first start, but also comes out early. What did you see? Yeah, yeah Dewar is never going to last a whole game. Uh, we knew that. Um, so, yeah, we got him to half time, 10 minutes past the half. Um, but we knew that Anthony was chomping at the bit. Um, so, yeah, Nicholas gets uh, some good minutes under his belt. Those are very important for him. Um, and, and now, yeah, there's a nice competition at, at left back. Hey, coach. Hi. Hi. Uh, with injuries to key players like Tim Parker and Edward Leuven, how do you think your team re uh, reacted to adversity tonight? Yeah, I great. I mean, I think you've, we've gone into some pretty hostile environments in the last uh, two games at Austin and Galaxy. Uh, and we fight our way back and we create these chaotic moments. And for that, I'm proud because uh, the guys, the way we train, the intensity we play at, we put teams in these kind of games. Um, and DC is a little bit of, you know, yeah, big brother, little brother, you know, I think we're related in certain ways, you know, we might play in different conferences, um, but we have a similar stylistically uh, game model. Um, and then to to lose two key players like that, you know, you take your hat off to, or Tom's hat, uh, to to <laughs> players to players like Josh Yarrow um, and other guys who step up, right? Thomas Ostrak's been amazing coming in the six and, you know, he's usually playing a 10 on the left or the right or through the middle. And then he does a job at the six. We know he's creative. He can, you know, hold the ball really well. Um, so we thrive in these moments. It's about a growth mindset. So it's a good question, Charlie. Thank yeah. you. We've got time for one more. Justin? I just wanted to ask about Shabu Lublam real quick. He made his impact in his return. He looked pretty good in the game. How did you feel about his return to the pitch? Yeah, good. He has a certain uh, pre-orientation of where the ball might pop out. Um, and playing against Benteke, it pops out anyway. Um, so, you know, we would have liked to have got him a few more minutes uh, tonight. Um, just the, the, the rhythm and the progression of the game. We just thought that was the right moment um, to, to bring him in. And uh, yeah, I, I thought he looked pretty good. Um, yeah. So again, we'll just keep on pushing him and keep on demanding more in training and getting him up into up to more speed. But uh, yeah, I'm glad we, we're getting, you know, healthy bodies over here. The the impact of the Champions Cup um, leaves its leaves its marks, um, and you can see around the league what it does. Um, we're getting over the hump now, and we're getting guys slowly coming back. And the more players that we have healthy, fit, strong in the roster, you know, the more competition. The internal competition drives the external competition, um, and and that's what we need from all the players. Coach, thank you for joining. Thank me. you very much. Have a good night. Mm. All right. Okay. Bye, Tom. Roman, the, the previous two ties were kind of good. They were on the road. You could feel good about that. But is this tie harder to feel good about? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think uh, at the same time, I'm disappointed about the, yeah, the, the draw. But the at the same time, I look at the game and I think like, if we don't score these goals, the chances we have, if we can't, if we can't score from an open play, um, we don't deserve uh, to win the game. And um, today it was, again, of course, they, they were difficult to play, but 
we didn't do enough to to win this game. Second time in three games, you guys have allowed a goal immediately after scoring a goal yourselves. What what are you seeing on those two plays? If there's anything in common there, um, the first goal, I think, um, if you look at it, the most dangerous players that, this player they have, nobody's with him. Um, after the cross, yes, we're trying to find him and defend, but that's something I mentioned uh, already, like earlier in the season um, to the guys and uh, in the, in the video that we have to, we have to actually track the guys because the, the, the player in the middle is going to score the goal, not the guy who's crossing. Um, if, if Jared Stroud scores from this angle, then it's my fault. Mm -hmm. uh, he was way too far to score a goal from there. So we have to sometimes organize or like think about like who's the dangerous player here. And, and Teke was all alone. Uh, Yaro came after to like try a little bit, but it's just not not not, not enough. And um, the second goal, I think, was two players of us um, tried to go out to make pressure for a pass. The ball gets played in between them. Jared Shroud again is can shoot, could shoot, but he plays it um, across the goal, and it's just too easy for we make it too easy for for our uh, opponents. Mm -hmm. yes. Roman, at the end of the game, it seemed like there's a lot of frustration on both sides. How are you, you know, keeping the temper down and as you try to chase the game there and try to come up with a win? Um, I think the frustration was more from our side was because um, I've never seen a team wasting time so much <clears throat> and just the referee not doing anything. Um, I think I thought the goalkeeper lost a leg. Uh, but then all of a sudden he was still able to to kick the ball um, almost to my box. So I told him once the the ref got, this is not obvious, and uh, he asked me, yeah, what can I do? And I thought like, yeah, you have two cards in your pocket, man. I mean, use them if you have to. I mean, control the game. Not don't let the game control you or the other team control you and uh, or control the game. So um, yeah, it's unfortunate, you know. Um, but I'm pretty sure we are. Um, or pretty sure that DC is not the only team doing that. Uh, I think we would try it too when when we are winning, not when we are uh, at draw. So um, the frustration was a little bit about that. Roman, we had a coach in here earlier, and he kind of mentioned that uh, he was a little frustrated with the lack of rhythm uh, throughout the game. Um, does that affect you personally at all? Uh, maybe hoping to, to catch a flow of the game, and, and how does that affect you going forward? Yeah, but also, I mean, like I said, um, DC wasted time. They knew that when they do that, we will never find rhythm. And um, um, that's also where the frustration comes from. Um, but still, I mean, we had chances, in my opinion. We just didn't uh, yeah, score out of open play. And um, But m me personally, it didn't really affect, you know. I tried to be ready whenever something is coming. And... Um, yeah, so. Roman, I think so far this season, we've seen pretty solid defensive moments, but you guys still are kind of struggling to keep the ball out of the back of the net. Do you think it's more so just unlucky moments that lead to goals, or is it just that small lapse and lack of concentration, like a critical moment that leads to these goals coming in? Um. Yeah. Hmm. I just think like, like I said before, we are still doing things wrong sometimes, you know, like, uh, like I said, we don't, we prioritize the wrong thing. Maybe we focus on the wrong thing um, because we maybe want to do it to do, uh, we want to do it too good, you know, maybe we want to like, oh, I'm going to defend that pass. And then, oh, what if I can't, is there another man that is is dangerous or more dangerous or, or like just we, we don't play sometimes we don't play the situation we play what is giving us or is is given from the coach as an option to do you know like if the situation allows it and um yeah and we are just making too many mistakes and like defending when it comes to balls in in our back balls in behind we saw against la I think they were only dangerous when they had uh, a long ball behind our defense. And uh, 
that's that's at the moment just like the weakness that we have. Got time for two more? Anyone has one? Nope. Roman, thank you for joining. Thank you, Appreciate guys. Tom. When did you feel you were fouled in the box? When that, yes. that would... I fell foul, and I told the ref. The first thing I told the ref, look, ref, was a foul, but I'm not a player who dives a lot. I'm honest. So check the VAR and Joaquin. Joaquin was telling him, oh, he's an honest player, blah, blah, blah. They checked. Clearly foul. Mm -hmm. Any thought to staying down? You know, when, you, when you bounce back up. And, was... Yeah, like, but it wasn't at all because I saw the ball was in front of the goal. It was a chance for us. So I didn't, I didn't want to dive. I saw clouds in the box. I saw people come into the box. So I just want to create a chance and score the goal. Thankfully, we, we got a PK and we scored. We tied the game. You guys are... Is, is it still that last play that you know, you're getting into dangerous situations, but still not getting the goals a lot of times? Yeah, I feel like this game, especially in the second half, we create some chances. We could score another goal to win the game. And yes, it happens, but we just got to work in the in the finish, in the last last touch to to put the to put the ball in the back of the net. Silio, when you came on as a sub, it seemed like things started to click in the attack. What were you seeing differently out there that on the bench in the first half that you maybe weren't seeing? I mean, like, like I said, like I do my thing, you know, I go in 1v1. I, I, when I try, when I get in, I like, try to be aggressive, create, create ch plays, uh, create chances. And that's what I do. Uh, I think. We were playing one style, long balls to Sam, and and when I when I came into the game, I just tried to change things up a little bit and and take take players on, you know, to create chances. And that's what we did. Kind of touching on what Tom was saying earlier, do you think at times you guys are just a little bit too impatient with trying to create a chance, you know, not making that extra pass or settling for a bad shot when maybe an extra pass would have led to a better shot? Yeah, for sure. I think sometimes we can be more calm in front of the goal to think about the next pass, to open up more and have a clear chance to score the goal. But yeah, man, I think everybody wants to do good. Everybody wants to score the goal, like as I, as an attacking player. And But I agree, yeah, we, we can be more calm and and breathe in front of the goal and think about the next pass or early shots, you know. But yeah, I agree. We can be more calm in front of the goal. Is the weather uh, good enough tonight uh, for this game? Yeah, I mean, it didn't matter because it's it's if it's good, it's good for both teams. If it's bad, it's bad for both teams. So I think we just have to to play and compete. But the weather, I don't think it was an issue. Were you expecting this game to be as aggressive as it got nor in the second half? They have a similar style to us, so I expected like a goal like uh, attacking, defending, defending, attack, like back to back, you know. But I expected us to win the game, to leave here at City Park with three points. But yeah, we didn't win. We we got one point, better than nothing. But yeah, I think we, I think we should be like a battle, you know. Both teams aggressive, so yeah. I see Leo. Ties in the past three games. It's it's definitely tough to be in a cycle uh, amidst a cycle of ties. I mean, it's a point, a point's a point, but um, do you feel it's it's tough to come out of these games? You know, you put everything out on the pitch and you come away with you know less than you guys expected. How I mean, is it is it tough to come away with a tie? I mean, it's a little frustrating, of course, because of course we want to every game we want to play for the three points. Doesn't matter if it's away or at home. But I mean, that's a little frustrating, you know, we want to win, we want to celebrate after the game, three points, you know, it's always tough. But like, like I said, we, we managed the game at least to, to, to tie in this game, but it's better than, than lose. I hate losing. So if we know, if we know any, I take the tie any day, you know, but yeah, of course we're going for the three points every game. Yeah. I hate to see what Jared Stroud was doing out there. Yeah, he he got assists. Yeah, very good for him. 
Yeah, well, like for me, I don't care. Like he plays in DC, I play here in St. Louis. But yeah, good for him. Mm -hmm. So thank you, George. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, it's it's not in the run of play, but how's it feel to get a goal? Finally. Yeah, good feeling. I mean, uh, first of the season, I I have been working very hard during of the past games. Of course, as a striker, uh, everybody expects that I score goals every single game. It's not possible, but yeah, I'm happy to score my first one. How's it felt? Because it seems like there have been for not just you, but for all the attacking players, chances and getting balls into dangerous positions and just nothing coming out of it. What's 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 been lacking? Yeah, I mean, you can look in that way, but it, also you can look in the other way that we're scoring a lot of goals. Um, of course, we always we always can get better, uh, but we play two away games, we score five goals. I think that's not really bad mm -hmm. so yeah we are we are working on these things uh, that's something that we we have to get better uh, in the last last third but yeah um it's just the start of the season and we we're gonna get better Klaus, can you walk us through the penalty a little bit it was a nice little starter stuff that you put into it was that a plan that you kind of had in the back of your head if you were to get a penalty today or did you just kind of see it in the moment yeah um i i train in pks every every week with um edu uh, and the other guys uh, we are always training so yeah that's the way i like to shoot and uh yeah i think it was it was good today uh also was my first pk in mls so keeper didn't know how how i was going to shoot so yeah, but uh, it's the way that that I always train. Uh, works very well in training. Also, uh, with our keepers like Ben Lund, um, Christian, they they already know the way I'm going to shoot. So what it makes even harder for me, but that's a good thing because then it should be easier in the game. Well, we saw uh, a little bit of your frustration with the refereeing throughout the match. Um, we've heard from Coach and Roman with uh, kind of talking about how there was a lack of rhythm throughout the match. Um, how does that affect you as an attacker? And um, is there any sort of, uh, you know, mental uh, thing that you have to get over or is it just a part of the game? Honestly, I, I wasn't frustrated. I think Effery did a good job. He... He managed the game the best way possible. So I don't think he had any, we had any problems today with the heifers. So I think he did a great job. Klaus, it always feels like you're putting 110% out in the fields, um, or on the pitch, pardon me. It's, it's definitely tough to walk away with a tie. It is a point nonetheless. What's your guys' approach coming into the next couple of games? Yeah, um, as you say, uh, we we always play to to win games. Uh, in MLS, uh, it's every we always have tough games. Doesn't matter where we play, if we play home or if we play away games. Uh, I think last year we didn't tie a lot of games, five games. So, and I think this year we already have four. So. Honestly, um, I think could be easier last year for us if you tie a little bit more games. But yeah, I think four, it's a little bit too much as well. So yeah, uh, I think it's more details that we, we have to get better. Um, we I think again against Austin, we didn't give up a lot and they, they found two goals. Uh, he said pieces if I'm not wrong. So this is kind of detail that we we have to to be concentrate for for 90 minutes. But yeah, as I was say before, it's better tie than lose. But of course, uh, we have to to win games to to make the playoffs in the end of the season. So yeah, we're gonna work on these details. Uh, Coach is showing us a lot of videos. Uh, we're training a lot as well. These these kind of details. That is, it's missing in our game. 
but yeah i'm sure also we didn't lose any game till now five games again without a loss so i think we we are in good way Cilio once again making an impact drawing the penalty that helps set up your goal on the pk just what has allowed him to emerge you know, starting at the end of last season, but especially this season as such a dynamic playmaker and important piece of the attack. Yeah, Celu, uh, he, I think he, he's the only player in our team that have these uh, 1v1 situations and the, the way we play in these transition moments, sometimes we need these kind of players to stay on the ball, to take players 1v1, open a space for other players. So, yeah, I think Sally is doing a great job. Uh, since last year, when he, he was coming, he was helping a lot. He showed his qualities. Now he deserves the minutes that he's taking. So, yeah, I'm very happy for him. He's a great friend of mine. Uh, he's a guy that everybody likes in the group. So he's very easygoing, very funny guy. So, yeah, everybody's very happy for him. And I think he deserves what is happening with him right now. Yeah, time for one more. We'll go to it. Klaus, you have obviously had a direct matchup tonight with Lucas Bartlett. Is it kind of difficult or different to play against a defender that knows you so well, or is it kind of the same as any other game? I mean, uh, Lucas is, is a great friend, great player. He is very strong. Physical, like Lucas. But yeah, since last year, we had great battles in trainings. Uh, sometimes it was a little bit fiery as well between us. And today we were doing off the game as well. Uh, so yeah, but I'm, I'm happy that he's doing well right there. Um, he deserves the, the minutes that he's, he's having right now. And I, I just wish him the best. Well, thank you, George. Thank you, JG. <laughs> thank you, guys. Have a great night. Before we kick off, uh, Josh scored his fifth professional goal, first MLS goal. So we'll kick it off, Tom. Uh, yeah, your your first goal. Um, is that it, what was it like to get that? And uh, what's, what was it like to get it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you get your first uh, major league soccer goal, it's it's always special. Um, you know, and say it's a good moment for me, but it kind of takes away a little bit, you know, I was not getting the win, but personally, I will celebrate that. Um, and yeah, tomorrow comes, it's a new day. So uh, a new day to, you know, pick us, pick myself up, pick ourselves up and, and go again. But I'm really happy and excited that I, I got my first MLS goal. But then it does it, it, when the other team then scores like a minute later, that's good. What, what, what kind of broke down there? Because that's the second time you guys have had that happen in the last three games where someone scored immediately yeah. after you guys scored? Um, I mean, it's tough. It's, it's tough. And I think it's it's something that obviously we'll look at as a team. Because I had actually had my name, when they scored on us, I had my name still being announced, which is uh, just shows you how fast the goal came. Um, and I mean, in soccer, you, you usually, when you score, you know, after like the first five minutes after you score a goal, um, you're susceptible to conceding. And I think, you know, that happened to us but again these are growing and learning experiences and i think we learned a lot of experiences in the in the, in the beginning part of this season um and it's only going to make it stronger i do i actually really do believe that is the team like distracted at that moment or is no, still... I, don't, I don't think it's a distraction i just i just you know whatever happened happened um it's, it's just a tough moment you know again like we'll look at it tomorrow we'll look at it and like i said we, we learn from it it's 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 in the past now um the only thing we can do now is learn from it. And I think this team is really good at that, learning, learning from our mistakes. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Josh, congratulations on the goal. Can you talk about the battle uh, with Christian Benteke and how difficult it is to defend him? Yeah, I mean, it's there's no hiding behind that. He's, 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 he's a big guy. He's a strong dude. He's, uh, he's a guy that's played at the highest level possible. Um, and we knew that going into the game. I knew there was going to be a, a fight. Um, we all knew that. Um, and I think it was a good fight. I think, you know, between myself and your back line, everyone on the team, I think, you know, for most part, we dealt with it well, um, with the physicality, with helping each other out. Um, and yeah, I think overall on the, on the night, uh, we, we, you know, we did well with it. Um, but yeah, no doubt, really strong guy, um, really smart player as well. Because I remember when I had a tackle on him and the referee called the foul and I went to him and I was like, Chris, you, you know, you know, that's not a foul. He's like, yeah, I know, but I just have to play the game. And that's just, 
you know, the kind of player he is, you know, tries to outsmart defenders. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the job that we did in containing him for the most part. Julian? Talking about Benteke, you obviously, in the second half, he had that one-on-one -on -one with Berkey and you kind of came out of nowhere and put pressure in the right time. I'm just kind of curious what's going through your head in that moment because obviously coming from behind an attacker, yeah. it could be very easy to accidentally commit a penalty and commit the foul. So what's going through your head in that moment? Yeah, I mean, I think it was just keep him on his feet because I knew that when the striker is in that position, they, you know, some most strikers would think they have time mm -hmm. and will stall that a little bit. And so <clears throat> I knew I could catch up uh, eventually. And I, I think I'm glad I did um, because I was, I was going to slide from a little bit further out and I charged the situation and I, I stood on my feet. And I'm glad I did because it, I would have probably caused a PK if I went earlier. Um, and yeah, at that point, you're just trying to do whatever you can to save a goal. And so at the last second, I put a foot in and he hit and it hit my foot. But fortunately, Becker was there as well. So who knows, he probably would have saved it. But I'm glad I was able to make that, uh, that challenge and you know, block a goal. And earlier, Coach Carnell was kind of talking about a lack of rhythm tonight. So I'm just curious from your perspective on the field, like what was missing tonight in terms of energy and intensity to create, you know, um, a goal from open play? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, that's, it's, it's tough because this is one of those games that it's just a weird game because a lot of it, the way they play, you know, they're really direct, just like we are. And so when you have two teams that are pretty direct, I mean, the, the game, it's like a pinball match, you know, and... Um, but I think the second half we came out and we were, li were a little bit better than we were in the first half. Um, we started creating and and overall, I think we created enough good chances. You know, the first half and the second half, I think we created some chances. Um, um, overall, again, it's, it's a little bit disappointed that as a team that we didn't get the win. But like I said in the beginning, these are growing experiences and we're only going to get stronger from them. And I'm just curious, you know, in those moments when you guys, especially in the second half towards the end, when you guys are kind of ramping up, getting some energy, the crowd is getting loud. And then a DC United player is on the floor stopping the time. Like, how frustrating is that for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's frustrating. It's 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 gamemanship, you know, and it's uh, players will do that, not totally against the rules. I mean, you sometimes people push the the rules of the game. I think they did that tonight. Uh, they did in a lot of places. We try to get on the referee to kind of get the game going, but. It is what it is, you know, and that's things that we cannot control. And I think what we focus on every time and every day, it's the things that we can control. And maybe some of the things that we could, if we controlled it better, it would have been a different outcome. But we don't place blame on anyone. Um, we look, we always reflect and look at ourselves and how um, better we could have done. And so, yeah, that's that stuff that it happens. We don't worry about that. It's, it's always on us. Just... Josh, it's the third week in a row that y'all go down a goal and come back to grab a point. Is there a confidence that builds as you, you know, fall behind, but you know that before you've been able to come back and you've done it in subsequent weeks? Yeah, I think it, it's just a belief. You know, like we we know that we're a good team. We know that we can compete with anyone. We know that as long as we don't quit, as long as we don't stop fighting, we're always going to get results. And whether you have a minute left, 30 seconds left, there's still time to make something happen. And so that's been the belief in this group that, Unless the final whistle blows, the game is not over. And you, you've, you've seen that throughout the season where we keep fighting until the end. And I'm really proud of the group for that. Um, that's that strong mentality. And again, we pick up all these experiences in the games that we've had, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past weekend, in the past weeks. And, you know, it's we learn from the, 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 our mistakes. We put the good stuff in our back pocket and we keep building as a team. And I think as a team, we're only going to get stronger over time. Yes. So are you getting sick of these ties? I mean, you have to look at it this way. Ties bad and loss. It might look like it's only, it's only, it was only one point tonight at home. Could we have gotten three points? Yeah, would we have loved to get three points? Yes, but these ties might look terrible now, but I promise you the, at the end of the season, that could be the difference between getting a higher seed or a lower seed. And we celebrate every point. Um, not that we're not disappointed with some ties, but it's these are ties that we're earning you know and yeah that could be the difference down the line and so yeah we we get disappointed a little bit but we also know that the point is always better than a loss and so we'll take it what was it like seeing jared stroud do jared stroud things like out there and you know, setting up two of the, the two goals yeah i mean 
that's a good that's a good homecoming for him if you want to put it that way. Um, and I mean, we know what he's about. We know what he can do. And I think you know he had a good game uh, with with assist and all that. Um, again, you know, happy for him. It's always nice seeing one of your colleagues do well. And nothing but you know, wishing nothing but the best. He's a good guy. He's a good player, and I'm glad that he's found a home. Josh, thank you for joining us. All right, thank you very much, guys. Have a good night. Thank you.